Welcome to Purple Easel Spotlight, where we put the spotlight on artists and creatives. My name's LaToya. And I'm Megan. And we're both art instructors here at California's largest paint and sip studio. So today we're going to be talking about Ivan Earl, and um, he's one of my favorite artists of all time. In fact, I don't know how I'm going to act in this episode <laughs> because of that. Um, I'm just the hugest fangirl. I was not the hugest, but I just really, 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 really like his artwork. Um, so you probably have heard of him, not necessarily heard, but you have seen his work um, because he was a background painter for Disney Studios. And you might would see his work at like Peter Pan, um, Lady and the Tramp and Sleeping Beauty. Oh, Sleeping Beauty? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the classic princesses. Sleeping oh. Beauty was always my favorite. Oh, really? I don't know exactly why. It's pretty. It's very fairy tale-y. And the villain is the best. I think it's because you like to sleep. Yes, I like sleeping <laughs> a lot. Sleep is great. So tell me more. Well, I will. When he was a young boy, at the age of 10, his father told him, okay, you can either paint a painting, make a little nice picture, or you can read 50 pages of a book. And he's like, Dad, I'm going to do both. So he started painting <laughs> a green deal. And he even had his first showing in France when he was 14 years old. Nuts. Come on now. Nuts. It's not even he's from New York. That's, I don't know. Yeah. That's, that's a lot for a 14-year-old, yeah. in my opinion. Seriously. So his dad actually kidnapped him. Don't know if you know that. No. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, oh, yeah, we're going to wherever. And, like, Loki kidnapped him from his mom. And as they were traveling... Mm -hmm. Um, that's, he told him, like, you need to either write or, or be artistic in some way every day. And his dad was a painter. Okay. Yeah. So I think it just like, he immediately inbred that mm -hmm. appreciation and work ethic and yeah, 14. Like, what the heck? I did not see that in the bio. Yeah, it's because I didn't read the bio. I go to other sources. Oh, thanks. So at the age of 21, he bicycled from like across the country, um, from Hollywood to New York, paving his way by making like 42 paintings. So he's like, sir, please, can I make some paintings for you? Bicycling across the country and producing work at the same time. Who is this person? I don't know. Other team. It, for real. It was robots before there were robots. Absolutely. And so years to come, he was selling out in art shows, but he didn't get his style and really solidify it until he's about 21. Well, around 21, he was kind of strictly doing um, realistic paintings mm -hmm. and drawings. Um, but in 1951 is when he joined Walt Disney Studios and they assigned him to be an assistant background painter. But Disney Studios was like, girl, you're too good to be an assistant. You must be the main background painter for us. That totally makes sense because up until that point, Disney Studios was very cartoony and Walt was really trying to pivot into a more like artistic experience. And so that's when he started bringing in classically trained artist mm. in comparison to like all his animators although his animators were great like mm. they didn't have that same style and so i think that's really where it set things off yeah so what we're looking at is a classic sleeping beauty <laughs> image um i don't have a lot to say because i feel like it speaks for itself it's i don't know so pretty <laughs> and like just the use of color oh mm -hmm. there's very little color but it's mm -hmm. so vibrant and it speaks so much to the scene of that movie did you know here's a fun fact for you Ooh. that he was so good at his backgrounds with sleeping beauty first of all it took him six years mm -hmm. But Walt was like, it's so good. I'm not even going to like push this fool to do it faster because he's got his magic working. Mm -hmm. But the animators were getting mad because it forced them to do more work oh. and do their stuff better so that it didn't look out of place uh -huh. with his background. Wow. I didn't know that. It's, it's so fun to me. I, I level love up animators. Level up. Oh, man. Bring it on. Yes. And so this next one is also from Sleeping Beauty, and he sold this one for $16,000. Wow. Mm-hmm. Love it. 
Um, one thing I really like about his work is the symmetry and all the like shapes and squares and circles that she'll just see throughout a lot of his work. Uh -huh. And then so um, the next few images that you're going to see are um, serigraphs, which is just a kind of fancy name for like screen printing. Oh, okay. uh, but the craziest thing that boggles my mind about looking at his artwork is I understand how screen printing works. I don't understand where, how, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't wrap my brain around it. It looks at it. like a normal painting. Yeah. Because there's so much texture. And I think with screen printing, we're used to things kind of being flattened. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see where the layers would occur, but this, you can't. So I'm wondering, I don't know, I couldn't find any information about like maybe, you know how like you will do a medium, but then you'll put like a different medium on, on top of mm -hmm. what the original was. I'm like, did he get on top of maybe some of the screen prints? It's possible. I know he used gouache a lot, okay. which is basically like an opaque watercolor. Uh, it's kind of got a, almost a chalky consistency cool. and it's sort of hard to work with. Yeah. And... I don't know. Maybe maybe it was screen printing with some gouache on it or something. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Or maybe he did gouache and it was screen printed on top. I don't know. It's yeah. a very interesting question. I literally do not know, but I just know that I love it. <laughs> yeah, the, the texture in the tree here is what's getting me. That's yeah. So cool. I like how things are almost like rainbow, but then dark. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. a flash of color and then dark. And I feel like a lot of his work is like a flash of color and dark at the same time. Yeah. But they're almost like equal in a strange way. He kind of plays up that contrast a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's interesting because the composition on its own, if this was just in black and white, is so strong. Mm -hmm. And there's such great detail and light and dark. But then throwing that little bit of color in there mm -hmm. just brings it to another level. Yeah, it really does. Um... Also, I it was hard for me not to just grab a new one. I can relate. Yeah, I was like, oh, this one, this one, this one, and I had ten. I was like, okay, so yeah, you're gonna have to narrow it down to like five, or five. four, or five. We'll flash up a bunch of them. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, so, uh, is there a specific one you want to talk about? Um, yes. So this one is my favorite Ooh. of all times, called Waves of Golden Fire. And when I look at it, I feel like I'm looking at Jesus or Buddha or some sort of like holy something. I don't know. And I think it's just the tree. I don't know. It's something like very, it's like the king of nature, like the queen of nature. Just feel like the god or goddess of nature. You have all these colors. You still have that black, which is really, really cool. I like the dark. Mm -hmm. But then you have all this life and all this color and this flowiness. It's almost like... I don't know, like the circle of life somehow to me. I don't know. Well, tree of life. Yeah. Hugely symbolic in like every possible. That is very, yeah. Every, every culture has mm -hmm. some version of tree of life and it's the essence of nature. Yes. You kind of hit it with that. It's... Yes. that It does feel like a tree of life sort of situation. Yeah. And the fact that it has all the colors mm -hmm. essentially, um, shows the diversity and beauty and it really the perspective of this one really gives you a sense of oh, oh yeah i think you're looking up, up. And yeah light is coming through the trees mm -hmm. and i think that gives it that ethereal mm -hmm. kind of feeling that you were hitting on agreed it's beautiful so i have one more fun fact about him okay the sleeping beauty castle mm -hmm. in disneyland was so designed and named before the movie was even released because Walt was so confident in the work. Wow. See? That's what I'm telling you. Uh, Disney Studios while it was still in production uh -huh. and wasn't even there anymore wow. by the time it released. But Sleeping Beauty Castle was a thing. Wow. And it's so iconic. Like, yes. Oh, yeah. Probably the most iconic image aside from mouse ears. Yeah. And now you know a little bit about Ivan Earl. Yep. So segueing into our next artist that is also very much influenced by Ivan Earl. His name is Lander Streibel. He's a Belgium-based illustrator and animator. And this work is so cute and woodland. Just like Ivan. Ivan does a lot of woodland kind of fairy. Not necessarily fairy, but like foresty kind of vibes. 
And also, isn't it just adorable? Her oh, love you. No, I love otters. I love them. I will watch them for hours. And is it an otter? I, I, yeah. I thought it was like one of them little weasel guys. Oh, maybe. Uh, uh, a ferret. ferret? It could be a little ferret guy. All right, fine. He looks like an otter. <laughs> Slash ferret. <laughs> anyway, it is adorable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the otters live in the ferret. <laughs> <laughs> So once we found out that it is a ferret, <laughs> it is so adorable, but I like the use of colors, very simplistic, but also it's the shapes for me. It's these very roundy, um, I don't know, something with like the symmetry. It just feels like math somehow. It's very balanced. Um, mm -hmm. The focal point kind of goes right in between the large ferret mm -hmm. and the small ferret. <laughs> But you have to have kind of this stuff happening off on the side in order to offset that. So yeah. I think it's very well balanced. It's, I do like it's that. It's good composition. And the trees are very, again, mathematical yeah. somehow. I very old. You know what this makes like, me think of? Tetris. Yes, also that. <laughs> or even Mario. But what I was going to say is when I lived in Northridge in the <laughs> valley, I thought it was hilarious how you'd be driving down the street and there's all these beautiful mature trees mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you see like a perfect cutout <laughs> where they trim the trees so the buses can get mm -hmm. in and it just cracks me up it, that that, that is actually right, really there. right there is like the inverse of it yeah i love it yes i like it i like it a lot and this next one um is Shared animosity for the set Wilds of Eldrain from Magic the Gathering. Ooh. So I really, 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 really like this one a lot because the symmetry, the just, everything's just like in a place and it feels a very um, structured in the way that it's either a circle, a square, a triangle, mm -hmm. some sort of basic shape and fitting images into those basic shapes, but also the image themselves are these basic shapes, if that makes any sense. Yes. So it's almost... A little bit cubist mm -hmm. it's not distorted but you've got mm -hmm. some of those harsh lines and the facial features and stuff are broken up into shapes that are very identifiable i think it's so interesting to compare this to sleeping beauty work mm -hmm. because the background is very simple yes and all of the focus is put on the characters mm -hmm. as compared where <laughs> Ivan Earls making these, you know, extraneous backgrounds, but it's still very effective. It totally has that same kind of whimsy, mm -hmm. even though it's not as soft. Wagering. Makes sense for the subject matter. Mm -hmm. well, they're going to war. Yes. I do like this a lot. I like the work. I like, there is like a softness, but I do like the shapiness. Mm -hmm. I feel strange saying like shapes and this and that, <laughs> but that's just how I feel about it. I yeah. do, it feels... I don't know, very tetris -y. Like, everything's just falling into place. To me, it's like math. It's like, nah, 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 nah. Mm -hmm. but I like that. It's clean, organized. I see squares, shapes, triangles, circles. <laughs> all the shapes. Yes, I see all the shapes, and I really like it. So, I have a very loaded question uh -huh. for you. Uh -huh. It is very loaded, open-ended. There's no right or wrong answers whatsoever. It's all just personal opinion, and you guys can chime in about your opinions down below comment because i would love to hear what you guys have to yes. say on this question are you born an artist do people are you do people just born artists or is it something that you were taught something that you learn and you become well look at how many people we've talked about recently who had a parent who is into the arts mm -hmm. and then they end up in the arts that's got to say something to me. Mm -hmm. um, but is it a nature versus nurture? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think I think you have to have certain aptitudes. Mm -hmm. You have to have that willingness to dive into something, to become almost obsessive with it. But then you refine that artistry through practice. Mm -hmm. And so that part of it can't be discounted because anybody can practice and get better at something. Mm -hmm but they might not have the drive to do it mm -hmm. if they don't have that kind of artistic soul, yeah. one may say. Mm -hmm. um, so 
I'm sure you've heard of people who have gone their whole entire lives, they've never done art, and then they become retired, and they just start dabbling in it, and then they're like in their 50s, and now they're just artists, like all of a sudden, and they had no idea that they had an artistic bone in their body. Um, I think there's something to be said about that. I personally straddle between, I can logically understand your point of view, and I get it, and I do agree with it. Um, a part of me thinks that there is something innate within someone, mm -hmm. just because... I innately and instinctively do not know math. I am really, 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 really bad. Really or let's say a topic that maybe I'm not the best at. I'm trying to think. Okay, like being a mechanic. I know nothing of cars. And I'm sure I can. But do you have interest in cars? No. That's part of the problem. Mm. You have no interest, so you're mm -hmm. not going to pursue it. I also don't like math. It makes me cry. Yeah. But oh, that's because I have avoided math because mm -hmm. I decided I wasn't good at it at a very early age mm -hmm. and then pursued other things instead. Mm -hmm. So I could probably maybe be good at math mm -hmm. if I hadn't been a third grade dropout and never learned my multiplication tables. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Like it's it's so hard because I, yeah, like you said, I see both sides of it and maybe that's the answer mm -hmm. is that it's a combination thing. Yeah, somewhere in the middle, right. actually. Um, I know that, uh, we get this a lot, um, especially during Paint Your Pet. Uh, <laughs> yes. Because we're with a uh, particular customer for a very long time. Um, oh my gosh, you, you're born with this talent. You're born with this talent. You, this is just something you've always done. And I'm thinking to myself, yes, I actually have always done this. When I was in kindergarten, I knew I wanted to be an artist. No one in my family was an artist prior. Mm -hmm. um, it's just something I always had a drive and wanted to do. It was always within me. So that's where I'm kind of like, well, I feel like I've always was, I was kind of born in, in my mind because there was nothing else I wanted to do. <laughs> I don't know if you an illustrator yeah. with my life. Um, but I do understand that people just get into it. They learn it. And then my fiance, he's a muralist and he is like, no, I was taught. I learned, I went to school. Mm -hmm. I was not born with the skill, but his dad's an artist. He had the desire to go to school. He had the desire, and yes. the skill. Mm -hmm. So I had a guest the other day, um, and she was so cute. She kept, uh, talking about my painting that I was doing and I talking to her about her work is she has a very distinct style and I was like oh my gosh your fox kind of gives me Pokemon vibes <laughs> and it was like really flowy and I had to show her a picture of nine tails <laughs> <laughs> anyway um she was saying that her children and her grandchildren make fun of her all the time because she sees things out in the world like she'll see clouds and be like oh that looks like blah 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 and literally this morning I was in my closet getting my clothes and I looked down and there's a hair tie. Mm -hmm. But it is in the perfect shape of a treble clef. And I thought of her. Mm -hmm. Like, and here I am seeing things. And I had told her <laughs> at the time, I was like, oh, you just have that mindset. Mm -hmm. Like, whether you have the skill yet to back it up, so keep coming to perfect mm -hmm. school and mm -hmm. get you that skill, you have that mm -hmm. outlook on life already. And I think that's definitely a thing. Oh, yeah. And I think those people who retire, it's because they finally have the time. Mm -hmm. And that's when they're pursuing other hobbies and trying to fill their time. And it's not something that needs to be done. It's something that can be done mm -hmm. suddenly because you're not depending on the financial reward of it. And mm -hmm. it helps them kind of become their inner artist. Yeah. Ooh. Very so good. not a distinct answer at all. But those are some thoughts. Some thoughts, and we would love to hear yours. So in light of all that heavy discussion, our viewers might be wondering, well, do I even pursue art if I don't think I'm born to be an artist? Mm -hmm. What would you say to them? Um, do it anyways. It don't matter. <laughs> do it anyways. Do it anyway. It's a song. I love it. <laughs> do it anyways. Yeah. I mean, you don't know until you try. Yeah. And... Even if it isn't something you want to like throw your whole life into, mm -hmm. there's so much value in being creative, in creating, mm -hmm. in being artistic, or at least trying. Mm -hmm. Trying and failing in oh, yeah. itself is extremely valuable, and mm -hmm. we do it all the time. Yes, as as an artist, that's it's like ninety percent. Yeah, it's just an inevitable. Yeah, um, that's as part of the process. But I would also say that you, only you know the answers to that. You yourself, you're going to be the one that has the answer to that question. Um, and you have to try it out and see what your heart and your mind, body, spirit says mm -hmm. when you produce the art. 
How do you feel about that? And you'll have your answer. We would love to see your Ivan Earl inspired versions of otters or ferrets in the comments below. Otters, please give me the otters. Yes. For all of us here at Purple Evil, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to check out the links below for today's artist, Ivan Earl and Lander Stribal. Mm -hmm. Join us at purpleeaselplus.com to paint with the world's largest paint and sip studio. And if you're in Southern California, make sure to swing by and come see us. Until then, create more and create often. Bye. Welcome to Purple Easel Spotlight, where we put the... the it, <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try it again.